Hey everybody, my name is Sebastian, and today we're going to be looking at the valid parentheses problem on um, um, So, to do this, we have to write a function that takes in a string of parentheses and determines if the order of the parentheses is valid. The function should return true if the string is valid and false if it is invalid. Some examples just one set of parentheses, um, mismatched parentheses, um, only one side and then a series of parentheses that are um, all valid. So to do this we need to think, okay, each set of parentheses needs to be valid. Um, one way to do this would be to loop through um, uh, the string and then once you find a location where the opening and closing parentheses are right next to each other. You could then delete those two, and then you could go back from there and see if um, there's some more sets right next to each other. Um, if that's not true, then um, it would be false because that would represent a mis mismatched set of parentheses. Alright, so to do that, um, loop through string, um, let's do by index, I um, may have to convert it, um, then we're going to Look for um, index and index plus one that is equal to these parentheses, the valid set parentheses. Um, slice out the valid. Uh, and um, and um, loop through the string again, checking for valid string. For valid sequence. So we should actually set a condition for all these loops. Um, so we can make while loop where friends has length. Then we need to set a couple of stop conditions. Um, if while loop or sorry, if um, friends has length of one, then we know it isn't valid. Or if what else? Um, if The remaining parents are not equal to then it is a let's put in a couple of my own test cases. So Thank you. 
and this will be true. Should be false. And let's see, anything else? Um, probably we'll also make the test case with multiple. So while finds uh, dot length this is going to check for every case in which your parentheses has length. Um, So then we should do so if i is equal to zero and then do i less than and dot for length i increases um So then I'm going to be looking for index. So um, let's make my find good checks. That's not really good. Um, let's just call it a search string. Search string. index. So then we're going to be looking for a location where um, the subsection of my string is equal to the search string. So um, to do that, um, we need to check real quick if you could actually index on a string. So um, I'm going to open up another program, check real quick. Um, so Then I'm going to console log string at position one, and it should return i if it works. Um, I'm going to use the program Quokka to just show me if it does work or not. Um, okay, so we do see that this pops up, which is 
basically the clock equivalent of uh, showing the console log. So we can do that. Now I want to do subsection of two. So um, can I do two, two? One to two, one to three. Um, let's see. Okay, substring. Um, I don't know if that's going to be a good way to do that for every single um, iteration. Um, so Uh, all of these are possible in the index of. Um, uh, Let's see. Um, let's try a different method. Um, this method will, it's still going to loop through, um, but then it's going to check to see if friends includes um, search. If includes search string um, splice it out and repeat. Um, if Use stop condition. So um, so if friends length if friends so the stop condition is going to be if friends length is greater than zero and um, the search string is not found. Substring. So I think I need to splice actually. It's just get the exact um, way to do that. This is a array method actually. Um, not really what I want. Um, and that's because strings are immutable. Um, I could probably find the index of. So that's what I should do. Um, so
Is that the correct notation? Yes. And because I know that each iteration is going to just be um, of length 2, the search string is of length 2, then I could actually splice that out. Um, so then I'm going to redefine friends as being equal to, um, actually I could redefine um, friends. So friends is going to have to be equal to, um, the up to um, the search string index. So I believe zero um, substring, let's use substring. Um, and it is not inclusive, which um, let's see, substring, substring. Which means a portion of the string starting at a specified index and extending for a given number of characters. So you start at zero, it's going to go to zero, and it includes two. So zero, one, two. So if you have two, it's going to include two. Um, we don't want it to include the um, exact index. So let's see the other method. There is a second one. Um, so it goes from, it's the same thing. Or no, it's not the same thing. Um, this is the non-exclusive one, so this is the one we will want to pick. Um, okay, so substring is one we want to pick. We don't want it to include i. Um, then we need to take the other part. So we need to add i plus 2, so i plus 2, uh, which is inclusive, and then make that um, the end. How would you do the end? You can substring. Um, it's optional. So if it is emitted, then it strikes to the end of the string. Let's check if this works on my test program. So, um, zero. Um, Two. Um, there we go. Piece of time. So it does 0 to 2, so 0, 1, okay, then it does um, i plus 2, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, inclusive, and then put a name in. Um, like, 
Um, that is weird. So we go back to here. We will then skip the two. And that should be good for that portion. It's going to redefine parens for every loop. Um, let's make this more descriptive. Um, okay, then we need to check the ending case. So for the while loop. In the occurrence that friends length is going to be greater than zero when there's no more um, valid parentheses. So does not include parens includes search string return false and then once we're out we're going to return to all right let's test it out on the test cases we failed one which one did we fail Friends index of is not a function. We get an error. So, um, okay, so index of needs to be capitalized. This is, um, is because there are multiple index of. Um, notations depending on, actually that's not correct at all. <laughs> I'm thinking of type of, um, so yeah, when it's indexed out, it has to be capitalized. So there's my error, syntax, or type error. Let's try it again. Okay, so pass all six tests. Um, can attempt it. We pass all the tests. Now let's see if I can make it look prettier. Um, let's see. I'm going to, to say that I don't need to define this. Although I do like it because it I just place it in to the three places I need it. So probably keep that. Um, I do like the I. Um, I could change it, but I'm actually quite happy with um, the length of the solution and the logic used to find the answer. So. I'm going to solve that. Um, I'm going to submit this. So let's just go through it one more time. Um, we need to check to make sure that all the um, pairs of parentheses were valid. Um, to do this, um, I decided to find each valid pair of parentheses and then to remove them from the given string. Um, that's going to gradually reduce the length of the given string, and um, then if the length is equal to zero, then it's going to return true, um, because all of the valid parentheses have been removed. If not, if the length is greater than zero, and there is no um, more valid parentheses, then the function is going to return false. Okay, so somebody now. Okay. 
So this solution used one while loop, which was a pretty good solution. Um, I think you um, should have to use the while loop to solve this. Um, if we look at the top rated solution, we see the, decla or the declare counting variable, the loop through the length, They, oh, this is interesting. If, um, if the parentheses at location i is equal to uh, the opening parentheses, they're going to increase the counter by one. If the parentheses at i is the closing one, they're going to decrease it by one. Um, if n is less than 0, return false. Uh, then return n is 0, which um, should be 0 if um, it's a valid solution. Um, I'm interested to know how this solution solves um, the test case where um, you give it invalid parentheses in the form of this. So I'm going to try it out. I believe it should return false. It does return false. So that is interesting. How is it working then? So it's going to oh okay. So what it's saying is at any point if um, if n is negative at any point, then the function instantly stops. And we return zero because that is the indicator that um, the closing bracket is shown before the opening bracket. Awesome solution. I like it. When you solve a problem, you should know that there's always another solution. Sometimes you're going to get the best solution. Sometimes other people are going to get the best solution. It's good to study how they do it because that's going to make you better. That's all for today. See you next time.